Hey, welcome back to my channel. Uh, it, I realize it's been a while since I've flown an airplane and uh, posted a video, but uh, I've been pretty busy with things at work and uh, other things. Uh, I've also been working on a little personal project that I'm kind of excited to talk about today. Um, so in my last uh, biannual flight review with my flight instructor, um, we we're kind of coming in for a landing and I, uh, I asked my instructor, well, what happens if we have an issue with our pitot tube if, you know, it you know, gets clogged or iced up or something like that. How do we land an airplane not knowing what the airspeed is? And so he covered up the uh, this airspeed indicator and said, okay, let's try and land the airplane without it. And I learned really quickly that it's not as easy as you think to land an aircraft if you are missing your airspeed indicator. Uh, you're very close to stall in most cases, especially if you're flying in the pattern. It's hard to know exactly how fast you're going and whether or not the wheel, wing's gonna stall. So. That brings up an interesting question. Um, knowing that, and, you know, we've all been taught this in our primary training, but an aircraft can stall at any speed. So why is it that we use an airspeed indicator to determine how close we are to stall? Well, uh, I don't know the answer to that, but it did prompt me to uh, look into how to build my own um, angle of attack sensor. Um, in my job, you may or may not know this, um, I am a software engineer, but I also spend a lot of time doing um, a little bit of mechanical engineering, a little bit of electrical engineering, electronics engineering, whatever the right term is for that, uh, working with embedded systems and writing code to, to connect those sensors to an embedded system, which then can be networked and then viewed on a screen someplace. Um, so I thought, well, this is right up my alley. So maybe I can make my own uh, 3D printed um, angle of attack sensor and maybe write an app that runs on a phone that pulls the data from that sensor via Bluetooth or something like that. Uh, so that's exactly what I did. Um, let me walk over here and show off uh, what I have. So this is my um, Bluetooth connected angle of attack sensor. Um, basically it's it's a device that hangs on the wing strut. Uh, that's what this little loop right here is for. It connects to a wing strut, has a little piece of velcro to hold it on tight. It's got a little bit of black vinyl around the inside here, which makes it nice and sticky when you put it on the wing so that it doesn't slide up and down or move around. Um, and then it has a little winglet on the side or a little wind vane, I guess is a better term for it. So instead of flying like this to go straight and level, um, as soon as we need to go uh, slow down, for example, we're gonna hit the wind slightly at a different angle, which will then change this wind angle to this. Uh, inside of here, I'll pull this open here in a second, but inside of the device, uh, there is a small embedded computer called an Arduino. Um, I guess it's not really a computer, but a you know small embedded device. Um, and it has a what we call a, a rotary encoder inside uh, that uses the Hall effect. Uh, if you need to know what that is, look it up online. There's plenty of information about there. Basically, it uses a magnet to determine the angle that this wind vane is sitting at. Grabs that data, puts it out onto this Arduino device, which then has a Bluetooth connection. It goes back to my phone. I've got a little uh, angle of attack application. Uh, I'm gonna select uh, agree to the disclaimer. And then I'm gonna start sniffing for this device. Right now it's not turned on. The button on the bottom is pushed off, so I'm gonna push it on real quick. And as I do that in a second, you'll see it just pulled up a Dander Flieger device. Stop scanning, press connect. Um, as I turn this, you can see that top bit of data moving up and down. So the angle is changing as I turn the wind vane. Uh, you can see that I have all these different settings that I have on here, one of which is the current angle, which we were just talking about. As I move that, that's gonna change. Um, there's also several other angles here that are interesting to look at. So the level angle is um, where we set, when we have this uh, device connected to the aircraft, and we want to set what our level angle is. So what I do is I, I put my airplane at cruise speed um, and let it fly in nice smooth air for a little bit until I feel comfortable and say, yeah, it feels about right. And then I can actually go in and press the set current button right next to the level angle. And that'll actually take whatever the current angle is from the sensor and change that to my level angle. Um, the next thing down is the descent angle. So uh, the way I set this one is I'll be flying along and then I'll do a three degree descent or whatever my descent is. In my case, I, I tested it at 500 feet per minute uh, descent. And when I felt comfortable doing a 500 foot uh, per minute descent and it was nice and smooth, I went ahead and set that button. And it's 
on the Cessna 152 that I was flying in and when I tested this, it was about 3.3 degrees off of the level setting. Uh, you can see that here, it says, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but 6.6 uh, is what the level uh, the lit level angle was. So based on what the, the device was giving as a reading when I set my level, and then my descent angle is 3.3 degrees off of that. Uh, later on, I flew and did some slow flight and decided I was gonna go ahead and pull back the power a bit, kind of uh, pull the nose up, slow down to about my glide speed, which is about 60 knots um, in the 152. And when I felt comfortable that I was, uh, you know, flying along at my at a nice slow speed, um, close to stall but not stalling, I went ahead and set that as my warning angle. And then my danger angle is the last one down here on my list. It says danger. Um, basically, that is what you want to set for when you're about to stall. So this is obviously something you don't want to do while you're flying the airplane uh, by yourself. You'll want somebody else in the airplane with you. Um, so we were able to go out, we did a stall, uh, we tested it. Um, I know that a Cessna 152 wing stalls about 16 degrees. Um, so I actually put in my danger angle is 15.7 beforehand. So we didn't even bother changing that while we were in flight. I knew that it was uh, going to be about 16. So obviously looking at this device, when I go like this up and down and it gives me my current angle of attack, that's not uh, terribly beneficial. Uh, it's too hard to read if you're you know, on a short final and uh, you're kind of close to stall speed or whatever as you're coming in for a landing. You probably don't want to spend a lot of time staring at this number and you want to spend more time staring at what's happening around you. So uh, we'll push this button down here for indicator. And here is an indicator that does the same thing except in a graphical way. It'll kind of let level out and maybe you'll go to this green line here. I can get it there we go get this green line and then as we continue to slow we might start to descend a bit and as we descend these uh, markers here will change um, to something different um, and eventually uh, if you get into the stall zone it'll actually nose turn red down. and start telling you to nose, nose down. down nose down now, obviously you're not going to hear that in the aircraft unless you have your device plugged into the panel uh, or if your headset supports Bluetooth, you can actually connect the phone to your Bluetooth like you would for listening to music um, and instead listen nose to down. this complaining about nose. your nose being too steep. Even though it turns red at what you think is 15, 15.7, uh, 15 this is actually 14.7. The app is set to turn it red one degree before whatever you set as your warning angle. Uh, that's just a safety factor kind of thing, has a little bit of margin of error in there. Oh, when my son and I took it out flying, we uh, we got up to a stall speed, and just before it was going to stall, it turned red and stayed there for a couple of seconds before I pulled back enough to be able to actually stall the aircraft. Uh, it leveled itself back out again. You could see it on the screen. It was pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and switch over to the video feed now, so you can see what it looked like in flight. Um, pretty excited about this. I'm gonna slow down. Go ahead and go back to the indicator. Slow it down to see if it makes any difference in the. We'll be out of your uh, air safety. Yep, it's starting to. Yep. Perfect. 
install here. <laughs> There's the horn. <laughs> Alright, so that's probably set just about perfect. Yeah. Beat. Boston traffic 753 turning uh, final 22 Boston. How's our descent rate look? Uh, pretty much right on the money. Now it's a little bit, well, it's fluctuating between a little bit high and right on the money. So what's the plan going forward with uh, this device? Um, you know, I've spent lots and lots of hours uh, working on it. Um, you know, everything from, you know, 3D modeling SolidWorks to 3D printing um, to soldering electronics together, um, testing out different types of electronics. I probably tried three or four different um, types of uh, angle sensors, hoping to be able to make this as simple and, and, and uh, as accurate as possible. You know, adding a power button, putting batteries in it, um, you know, all the, the, the mechanical engineering that goes behind actually connecting it to a wing strut, uh, programming the phone. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of little tiny things that went into this to make it work. Um, so did I do it just for myself? Well, yes and no. I mean, it was mostly because, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic and I had a lot of free time on my hands. Uh, you know, you save an hour to and from work each day. It's a couple hours you have each day that you can use to do something else. Um, so I thought I'd focus on something uh, worthwhile, but it's also not just uh, for myself. Um, I have plans of you know posting some of the uh, files up online that people can you know use use what I've done to to make their own. I'm happy to share code. I'm happy to share uh, SolidWorks models. That's what you need to 3D print things. So um, I'll probably just export out to SDL, um, and you're welcome to download those files. Print them if you have a printer and, uh, you know, do some soldering, buy the parts. I'll create a parts list so that everybody knows what to buy. Um, there is one caution, though. I don't think that this is okay to fly with in a certified aircraft. I will uh, make the disclaimer that this is, it's an experimental device and you use it at your own risk if you plan to do it. Um, I'm, I take no responsibility for your actions or your choices um, when you're flying the aircraft. Remember, as pilot in command, it's, you have ultimate responsibility for the safe outcome of every flight. It says very clearly, not for use as a primary instrument for flight, right at the top. Um, it's placarded that way because uh, that's what the FAA wants on these uh, angle of attack sensors. Um, there is a little bit of gray area there. I think, um, you know, people put GoPros out on their wing struts all the time, uh, and there's no issue with that. Um, people add apps on their phone, uh, you know, EFBs and you think about things like uh, ADSB and uh, you know the the blips that come up on your screen for better situational awareness. Um, to me, this isn't any different than that. Um, but again, this is that's a gray area that you'll have to decide on your own if it's okay to use or not. But again, uh, I'm not taking any responsibility for how you use the device if you decide to build one yourself. If you're just interested in learning how to make something like this, it's a great way to do it. I mean, all the codes, you know, I'm, I'm releasing it as open source, open source code. You're welcome to go in and, and dig through the code yourself and, uh, you know, make improvements to it for your own device or whatever. Um, it's, I think it's a pretty cool project, so uh, feel free to, to do it. Uh, I plan to do a, ser a new series to go along with it. Um, so I'll be doing everything from talking about what angle of attack is Again, I'm not a certified flight instructor, um, so I'm not certified to tell you what uh, angle of attack means, but I know what angle of attack is. Um, so I, I am gonna talk about it a little bit. Um, I'll also talk about, you know, how to assemble this device. Um, you know, we'll talk about everything from, you know, uh, bearings and shafts and, you know, the little uh, winglet that goes on it, um, you know, how to actually strap it to the aircraft. Uh, there's a lot to it, and uh, so there'll be several follow-up videos to uh, describe how to do it, um, hopefully make it easier for anybody who wants to do it. Anyway, uh, hopefully this has been a beneficial video for you and you're looking forward to building your own uh, angle of attack device. 
hopefully the next video will be on uh, what angle of attack is and, uh, and why it matters in a, in a small aircraft. Uh, so we'll see you then. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Uh, please feel free to subscribe. Um, you may want to, you know, click on the, uh, I don't know, some people talk about this on YouTube. There's a little button you can click that rings a bell to tell you when something new has come up. Feel free to do that. I don't monetize any of my videos. I'm not here to make money. I have a good job and uh, I'm happy to share what I've learned and the things that I do uh, for free. So uh, if you're so inclined, please uh, subscribe.